Okay, good evening everybody. Thank you for joining us at our University of Leicester Digital Open Evening. Uh, it's really good to see uh, you all virtually here, uh, tuning in uh, to hopefully a variety of really engaging sessions uh, this afternoon and evening. Um, I'm Elliot, I'm our Head of UK Student Recruitment and Outreach here at the University of Leicester and I'm here to talk to you uh, this evening about personal statements. Um, I'm going to give a bit of an overview um, on, on a whole range of things really uh, about the topic and I'm, I'm guessing you're here to find out a little bit more um, about how you might be able to craft your personal statement. I am also conscious that we might have people in the audience who are at varying stages of writing your personal statement at the moment if you're applying for, for university entry this year. So what I'll try and do is cover um, a, a few kind of refresher points on, on some of the more basic elements of the personal statement uh, and then look towards focusing on the structure that we suggest that you use, um, how you might get started if you are um, someone that is struggling to go from kind of blank page to something on a page, uh, a few top tips from myself uh, and then what I also have is a range of um, questions that um, people often ask. Um, I've worked in the sector for about 10 years so we get a lot of questions about personal statements which we've pulled together in a, in, in a few different slides. I should also say if you've got your own questions then please do feel free to submit those. Uh, if in the top right hand side of your screen you should see a little Q&A button, if you pop your question in there uh, my colleague behind the scenes will publish those. If you see a question that you were going to ask or you'd like or you think is a very good question, please feel free to use the little thumbs up. Uh, and at the end of the session, uh, in about half an hour's time, I'll go through as many questions as I can on that and particularly focusing on ones that, that get the most likes. Um, but in terms of kind of getting um, started with the presentation, I said I thought I'd get uh, start off with the, the kind of basics with the personal statement and, and how um, how you need to think of it in, in, in light of where it fits in with the application process itself. So it's, it's really important to kind of first think about what it's there to do, what is a personal statement and why is it part of, of the application process? Because I think that def sometimes helps you think about what you might include, what you might ultimately not include, and also help you those of you that are struggling struggling potentially to kind of either go from some, nothing to something or go from something to a full thing, um, having that real focus on what it's there to do and not there to do can really help differentiate you uh, within that as well. Um, so essentially in that kind of black bold sentence, it, that really focuses on what it's there for you to do. It's to really showcase you as a person applying to a university um, or a range of universities for a subject of your choice and that you deserve to be made a university offer. Lots and lots of people apply to university each year. Um, it, in certain subjects and at certain universities, it's particularly competitive. Um, and it's the personal statement is a really good way for you to stand out from the crowd and, and show that you um, have gone above and beyond uh, and are really someone that that university should make an offer to. So essentially, if, if you can get to the end of your personal statement and you can read it through and you think that's that's me on a page, that's me trying to, to kind of show that I stand out and ultimately me saying I deserve an offer, that's all you need to do. Really important uh, basics to kind of remind you of. It's all submitted via UCAS, so within your UCAS hub. Um, you have a maximum of 4,000 characters um, or 47 lines, it's whichever comes first. It's about a page of, of normal text writing on uh, Microsoft Word or equivalent. So it's not loads, but it's also um, not really short. So it's, it's important that you, that you think about that and I'll go into the structure uh, that we suggest that you use and how you then flesh that out in a few minutes time. One of the really important points to remind you of is that whilst you might be applying to five choices uh, within your UCAS application, um, you only um, are allowed, um, and this is a good thing, you are only allowed one personal statement. So you don't have to write one per choice, you have one to support all five. Now that um, is really important to remember if you are someone that is choosing between different subjects and maybe if you come to making your application and you still haven't decided and you maybe are doing three for one subject and two for another subject, remember that your personal statement needs to support all five of those choices. Uh, if you are applying for a joint honours degree within that, uh, so maybe a, a subject something like history and politics for example, um, we would encourage you to ensure that your personal statement supports again both of those subjects uh, contained within that choice. Uh, the final point on this slide is to remind you not to cheat uh, and not to steal someone else's personal statement. Um, UCAS does have a very strong detection service that is there to essentially run your personal statement past, uh, past every other personal statement that's ever been submitted to, to kind of get a sense as to um, if you have uh, borrowed, shall we say, um, any content for that. 
it does flag up commonly used phrases, but not in a, in a detrimental way to your application. Um, so we'd encourage you always to think about how you can be uh, as unique as you can to avoid any, any elements of that detection service. And um, with, with a personal statement, again, for, particularly for those of you that uh, are maybe earlier on in the process or haven't yet um, committed to that much content on a page, it's sometimes helpful to think about how you can break your personal statement down. And then at least if you can kind of chunk up the, the, the document that you're using to draft your personal statement, it helps you kind of with, with kind of titles of those, se those sections. But also for those of you that have finished your personal statement or, or nearing the end, you think of the personal statement journey, it's important to think about has your personal statement got a, a kind of a, a clear structure that it's following? And if not, I'd suggest that, that you have a bit of a, a, re, a redraft to try and put it into some semblance of order. And the, the order that we suggest um, is, on, is on the screen now. So we suggest that you have an introduction as with most pieces of work um, to kind of draw the reader in. Uh, it can be very short and I'll show you a couple of um, I'll talk you through a couple of examples in a second. Um, it can be very short. Um, these are where usually we see commonly used phrases quite a lot. Um, kind of I have always been interested in or ever since I was small I wanted to do X um, or I'm particularly passionate about whatever subject it might be. I'd encourage you to try and be a bit more unique than that uh, just because it's a bit of a boring way to start um, and for some sentences particularly those that have things like I have always been interested in, the reality is you probably haven't always been interested in that particular subject. So what is it that drew you in when you might have been younger in age to that particular subject? One really good example I've seen um, a few years ago now when talking about getting into engineering was as a child that that particular student liked to build stuff. Uh, and as they grow, grew older, as in Lego and all that sort of stuff, as they grew older, they got more into the kind of mechanics of that. And how is this all working? How is this staying up? What's the structural integrity, et cetera, which had got them into wanting to get into and to, into engineering as a discipline. So it's that type of example where you, you are saying since you were young, you've been, you are, have been interested in that area, but you've built on that as your childhood example. So definitely have an introduction and skipping ahead to section four, I'd, I'd also recommend that you should definitely have a some form of conclusion to your personal statement. It doesn't have to be very long. Um, one or two lines is fine because again, we are conscious that you've got not that much content to work with. Um, but the main reason we suggest you have this conclusion is otherwise it kind of feels like you ran out of space uh, and maybe it kind of leaves the reader wanting a little bit more and, and almost a summary. So if you can try and build those two building blocks first, to kind of give your personal statement a bit of a framework, you then know you've got the kind of middle bit to, to kind of flesh out. Um, within the middle two sections, so the academic interests and the kind of life, work experience, skills, achievement sections, our recommendation is that this should be the, the absolute bulk of your personal statement. Um, somewhere between kind of 40 and 42 lines would be, would be uh, really good. Um, the academic interest, I'm going to show you an example in a second of what we mean by this, um, but this is a sense probably should be more content in this section than section three, um, because essentially that's what you are applying to do. You're applying to do an academic um, degree at university. And what we want to see particularly in that section is, yes, your interests, but your strengths in, in those particular areas, what you have enjoyed, how that links to what you're applying for. And then within section three, again, that, that can be a decent amount of context, content but it should be slightly less than the academic interests um, section but that's where you can go into detail about your transferable skills anything you do outside of of maybe school or college or in your in your personal life anything else that you're proud of you that you've achieved which maybe has demonstrated a, a range of skills that are applicable to the degree that you've applied for so if, if you have that full structure in place um, it nicely reads as a document uh, it it has the emphasis where the emphasis needs to be uh, and it brings together a range of different skills to show you as a really rounded individual. Now within the um, academic interest section, I'm not expecting you to read um, these are full examples. These, these are uh, um, excerpts from, from genuine personal statements that, was, that have been submitted to the university. I wanted to give you two examples. I've got one that shows how you can demonstrate your academic interest from within st something you're studying at the moment. And then I've also got another one as to how you might demonstrate um, work experience <clears throat> and within this one this is about economics uh, and I've picked out a few kind of key points from this excerpt that you um, that it's really good to, to kind of think about when you are talking about your own areas of interest so 
within these kind of these green highlighted sections, what you can kind of see is is how important it is to be specific with examples that you're using to relate it back to the subject that you are interested in and and go, not just talk about well I am I am enjoying I'm studying economics because I like economics um is really going into a bit of detail about the particular area of the subject that you're interested in and maybe then taking the reader on a bit of a journey as to what you've then gone on to do as part of that area of interest so think about um within that within that kind of piece demonstrating rather than describing what you've learnt as part of that curriculum if you are studying that uh, as a subject at the moment if you aren't studying the subject you're applying for let's say you're applying for something like engineering think about what you're doing in in subjects that are related to that things like maths and physics chemistry potentially as well what have you learnt as as part of that that has, that has drawn you in even further if you can be um, specific with examples, that is great because again, it shows us as institutions, as universities, that you that you genuinely know what you're talking about and you're wanting to get involved in more detail. And it, that's the type of work you'd be doing as a university student. Ideally, we wouldn't um, see quotes or citations in personal statements just because they're not your own words. Uh, my recommendation would be um, if you really, really want to use a quote, then fine, um, but it, do bear in mind that's taking away X amount of words or X amount of characters that aren't yours. So it needs to be the, the utmost relevant quote for you to use within that. Um, you can use buzzwords and, and subject specific terminology within your personal statement. That's absolutely, again, absolutely fine, but make sure you are using them for a reason. So if you are including specific, in this example, specific economic terminology, make sure you kind of talking about why you've included that uh, within within the content that you've that you put in ideally you'd you'd showcase an element of, of reflection as to why you're talking about that, that example a bit of critical thinking if you can uh, if it makes sense if the if the example that you've used particularly for things like social science degrees arts humanities etc um if you can show that within a personal statement again it gets that the um uh the university um really confident in your ability to be able to do that as part of a university degree. And then if you can, again, within those examples, think about how you'll then use those skills within university. That's a really, really strong example. Now, not everyone will do this. And again, the strongest personal statements are the ones that have not not loads, but maybe two or three really, really strong examples um, that, that kind of cover all of these five bases if you're talking about your academic interests. So rather than shorter, sharper, examples I'd, I'd encourage you to think of as i said as i said two or three that bring together and a nice rounded examples that you're using and i'll show you a structure you can use uh, later for that and the other area we get asked a lot quite a lot is about work experience uh, and how to include work experience within a personal statement um particularly if you haven't got work experience in that particular sector that you are uh, applying for and again if, if you have fantastic again remind a reminder there to really focus on what you learned as part of that experience not just what you did if you have any work experience that you're wanting to include in your personal statement fantastic and this can also be kind of extracurricular experience this is the same type of advice that would apply volunteering anything like that um, anything extra essentially that you're wanting to show this example here focuses on a variety of different um uh, other bits that this student um, did at the time, uh, focusing on their, their strength, what they did as, as team captain of the football team, um, part time job as a waiter while studying at sixth form, um, and how they were able to link these examples together as well as showcasing their, their transferable skills. So things like listening, leadership, communication, time management, budget management as well. It really showcases to us as an institution that they are exactly the type of of skills, of traits, of, of strengths that, that university students do need. Um, so it's a really good example of how they brought those together rather than just kind of listing the things that they do outside of, of school or college. Um, so again, in terms of breaking that down, make sure you focus on you as individuals. Um, so the, 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 the particular skills that you showed. Um, obviously, if you're talking about teamwork, then you um, you can you can, you can reflect on the we, but think about your role in that particular team um, that you that you that you might want to focus a little bit more on. Um, 
one of the key things with personal statements, because this applies to pretty much any degree that you apply to at any university, is the need to showcase transferable skills. Um, so they, as uh, by the name, are things that you can transfer from, from discipline to discipline, from year to year. So again, key ones that universities tend to look for are around communication, team working, uh, independence, um, self-motivation, things like that, that again, you, you're going to have to show at, um, at university level to, to kind of be on any degree, really. So again, can you can you illustrate any examples of those? You might be able to showcase those transferable skills from the academic section, um, but there might be some that are, you have a stronger example of showing within within this particular section of the personal statement. Um, the other thing to, to obviously mention with being a university student is that kind of balance between academia and, and, and um, non-academia time. So again, this example was very good at showcasing, well, if I'm, I'm able to balance having a part-time job and being a student. So again, if, you, if you've got that ability, if you've got that um, experience within what you've done at the moment to showcase that, then, then do tell us. And again, be excited, <laughs> be positive, use your personal statement to, to really demonstrate your excitement of, of um, becoming a university student and again that can apply to both sections both the the academia side uh, as well as the the kind of um, broader experience side as well um, it's, it's something that we we love to see on on personal statements and um, so this section this slide really is focusing more on those that are maybe earlier in the process so how you might get started um, obviously you've still got a couple of months um, until the UCAS deadline on the 31st of January so still plenty of time so if you are at this stage don't don't fret at all still plenty of time to develop that and I wanted to kind of hopefully give you some uh, hints and tips to get you off off that ground and um, the first way of doing it is rather than thinking about having to go straight into writing full on sentences and full full statements is essentially try and list things that you've done, um, whether it be in school or college, in your personal life, in your professional life. If you have a part time job, think about the activities, experiences, skills, interests um, that you have done and kind of surround yourself with a bit, a bit of a list. It might be post its, might be notes on your phone. Uh, it might be scribbling notes on a piece of paper, however you feel most comfortable in doing that and what works for you. Have that list to hand. I'm not saying you're going to use all of those, you probably won't, um, but then at least you've got things to draw on um, when it comes to getting off the ground with your personal statement to think about how they might fit in to your personal statement as well. And um, if you can, try and again, before you start writing, try and link those together. Um, so if you're going to talk about an example which demonstrates your interest in, let's say, chemistry, um, think about are there points um, that showcase the real transferable skills that any chemistry student is going to need, whether that be uh, problem solving, whether it be attention to detail, uh, again, time management and perseverance, motivation, team working potentially. Have you got an example of something you've done, I said, either from the academic side or, or the not academic side that really showcases that particular point and then you can include those. I'll walk you through this method in a second but the, the, what we rec recommend using is, is some form of um, coherent method that essentially with your examples make sure that each one is as rounded as it can be and we, we recommend what's called the ABC which is essentially the activity so what did you do um, which is most if not all students will include this um, what was the benefit of doing that? So what, either what did you learn? What did you gain? Um, it might be that you learned something yourself. It might be you learned something about a particular profession or a particular uh, piece of research or, or a piece of um, society, for example. What did you learn from that experience? And then how will that help you studying university? And if again, when you when it comes to using or putting together your examples that you're going to talk about and your evidence in your personal statement, if you can try and ensure each one has these three things um, that's as strong as you can really get uh, with your personal statement most students as i said will if not all will talk about the activities what they've done some will go into a bit of detail about what they learned and not many will have that rounded off experience of talking about how that will benefit them as a university student so again going back to the point of your personal statement if you can have all three of these things to try and that will really help you stand out from the crowd a few um, top tips from um, a range of colleagues in, in, uh, that are involved in university admissions across the, the university and also the wider university sector. And um, try and be concise if you can. As going back to what I said earlier about you having 4,000 characters, 
that's not loads. So if you can try and be as concise without being really too short and sharp with with your wording as you can. If you've got a 20 word sentence, can it be reduced down a little bit, but still have the same effect? And that that comes with redrafts, which will be a, a another tip in a second. And then again, try not to repeat yourself within your statement. The conclusion should summarize what you've talked about without repeating what you've talked about. So kind of in conclusion, I hope all of the above essentially summarizes why I'm a very good student rather than repeating. I hope I'm, I've shown you that my skills are in X, Y, Z things that you've already talked about. And um, proofreading is always quite important to do as part of most work that you'll, that you'll ever do, um, particularly for a personal statement. And the main reason for this is um, you, there will be a spell checker within within the the UCAS personal statement section. Um, but what that won't potentially pull up is words that are spelt correctly. They're just the wrong word. A very common example is things like from and form. Um, it's very easy to mistype, not that easy to spot, particularly if you've read your personal statement a hundred times and be, kind of become blind to those errors. So try and avoid anything like that. And again, a fresh pair of eyes is usually quite good to avoiding that. Do um, go and link it back to point one. It is important to redraft, and this links into a little bit around time management. Uh, you really want to ensure that your personal statement is as strong as it can be, and you've given yourself the best opportunity um, it, that you can to kind of sell yourself the best in the best possible light to the university. So if you leave it right until the last minute, the ability to kind of hone your statement down and be as confident as you can be about it reduces. So my advice would be, particularly if you're earlier in the stages at the moment, is to try and use the next, particularly the month, next month or so before Christmas, um, wisely uh, to help you kind of get that off the ground. What I would say with redrafts is I wouldn't advise doing loads because then it almost loses that personal touch, particularly if you're getting feedback from people. Whilst it is good to get feedback, do then translate that feedback into your own style of writing, into your own examples, uh, rather than directly taking feedback and then just plonking that in from, from someone else's comments or words. And the, the, I guess the, the the penultimate point on this slide is being yourself. Um, the clue is in the name. It's a personal statement. It's there for you to show off about you. Uh, so using your own language, don't plagiarize, don't steal someone else's words, uh, but think about what are your own um, real USPs, your unique selling points about you individually and try and showcase those on the page rather than showcasing someone that you're not, but also um, someone that you've stolen their identity of by stealing their, their, a bit of or all of their personal statements. So be yourself and be confident about yourself, which is which is often hard. Um, and what I'd say here, particularly linking back to what I said earlier, said earlier about showcasing your skills and your strengths, sometimes it is quite hard for us to talk about those without feeling a bit awkward um, about kind of bigging ourselves up too much. And that is completely fine. That's completely natural. So again, that's where your friends, your family, your teachers, um, people you might work with, people you know outside of any of those spheres. And don't be afraid to ask them what you, th what they think your strengths and your skills are, um, because if you're hearing it from multiple sources, it is probably true. Um, and the final one would be, I guess, be on time. Don't miss the UCAS equal consideration deadline, which is the 31st of January. You might have your own internal deadlines. Uh, if you particularly if you're at school or college at the moment, um, I would recommend setting your own internal deadline ahead of that UCAS deadline if you can, because again, it gives you that wriggle room uh, if, if there are any um, last minute changes to um, to ensure you don't miss the ultimate kind of equal consideration deadline. And that, as I said, that the clue is in the name of that deadline. It's there for you to have equal consideration as to whether you get made an offer along with everyone else that gets their application in before that deadline. That equal consideration gets removed after that deadline. Um, just before we finish, I've got a few um, FAQs that um, people often ask, so I thought we'd cover those to get ahead of questions that people might have that you can use the Q&A function for, just as a reminder. Um, the first one is, what if I'm applying to multiple courses? Um, and that can be, as I mentioned right at the start, it might be that you're applying for, let's say, four of one subject and one of another one, um, or three and two or maybe three single honours degrees and two joint honours degrees, where you might have um, two subjects that you're applying for. Um, and what I'd really say here is if you are applying for multiple subjects, try if you can and think about where the similarities are in those subjects and the type of skills um, that apply to both. So for example, if you're applying to maybe history and English, something like that, um, 
the, the there are quite a lot of similarities in terms of analyzing text, analyzing different arguments, um, critical thinking, again, probably time management, essay writing, those type of things are going to apply to both of those subjects. So can your personal statement really focus on on those as your strengths? If the subjects you're applying to are quite different, it becomes harder. The, 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 the wider that gap goes, the harder it does become. Um, so it, it's still the same message. I think of where the similarities are. But ultimately, if you are getting to that stage, I'd, I'd almost recommending kind of resetting your searches and thinking about what is it that's definitely right for you. Um, and do bear in mind for some disciplines and also some universities, potentially, uh, they'll only want to see one subject on your personal statement, particularly things like healthcare, where it's very competitive. Um, if you start veering off into another healthcare discipline from the one you apply to, you're probably not going to get much luck um, because there'll be hundreds, if not thousands of applicants for that particular subject that are 100% ahead for that subject. Next one um, around work experience. Um, this comes out a lot from students really not believing in themselves in terms of what you are doing outside of your kind of academic life at the moment or professional life if you're if you're um, out of school or college at the moment. Um, what I'd really kind of suggest here is taking some time to think about what you do in your spare time. Um, often you'll do stuff without necessarily thinking about it because it's just what you do. It might be helping out at home, it might be volunteering, it might be helping out in your community, it might be having a job, it might be a part-time job, it might be creating content online, a whole variety of things that you'll be doing. Um, sometimes without thinking about it. And then that's why taking a step back can really help. Um, and once you've done that, it'll become a bit clearer as the things you might want to talk about in your personal statement. If you really don't think you've done anything else, which you, you probably have, but if you're really confident you haven't, focus your, your personal statement purely on the academic side. That is, that is fine. It is nice to have a bit of a balance, but it is also fine to, to be 100% academic if you wanted to. Um, We've had one around, uh, quite a few around, should I take write a personal statement and submit my application? Essentially, if I'm taking a gap year, uh, my, applica my application, my advice here um, is usually, yes, I would, I would recommend getting your application in that year uh, before going off in your gap year and getting your place secured at university, uh, because then you can go off on your gap year knowing that that is done. And you can you can relax and chill and do whatever you want to do in your gap year. You also get the support potentially if you're at school or college, which might not be available if you aren't there as a student. Um, that's not to say you have to. Uh, if there are genuine reasons why that doesn't make sense for you, then then absolutely fine. But my advice would be yes. And then within your personal statement, it's if you know what you're going to be doing or want to be doing, then you can then talk about that within your personal statement as well. And again, any any experience you're hoping to gain and how that links to your degree you're applying for. Um, I've kind of covered this with the example I use around what if my work experience doesn't relate to my course. Um, again, think about the transferable skills within that. We see lots of examples each year, which are really, really good. And the best example I think I've ever seen was someone applying to a medicine degree uh, that talked about their work experience in KFC. Uh, which if they have just written a line, um, I've got work experience working in KFC and applying for medicine, wouldn't as be as maybe applicable. But the way they're able to go into detail about the skills they had to show as part of that experience in things like um, working with the public um, in different environments at different times of the day, different types of shifts, working in a team, communication, um, working in a kind of high pressured environment, a bit of admin involved as well. They're the types of traits and skills that you'll see within being a medicine student as well. So it was that ability to kind of transfer um, the skills and the, the the traits that they showed within their work experience to what's required on that degree to try and do that if you can. Two more to go. Um, the next question is, oh, we often get asked, does my personal statement matter? Um, does it does it have much weighting on my application? Uh, and the honest answer really is that it varies. Um, uh, it varies from subject to subject and university to university. Uh, but my main advice with the personal statement is it's probably going to get read at least once. When that gets read may differ. It might get read at application stage, um, particularly if your maybe your predicted grades are slightly lower than a than a um, than the entry requirements by that university. 
it might be that uh, it's read down the line, maybe ahead of an offer holder day or ahead of us receiving your exam results or just after we receive your exam results. So it, it, it really can vary a lot and it, uh, it depends on a whole variety of factors. But the most important thing to remember is it will probably get read. So it's really important that it's, it's as strong as it can be. And um, this one's kind of new for this year, I think, where I'd, I'd say within, within FAQ. Um, should I use AI or ChatGPT to write my personal statement? Um, and the, again, the answer is here, or my particular opinion is here, um, that what a, kind of AI and ChatGPT potentially are quite useful for are for students that are, sh are kind of struggling to get started. Um, so if you are able to use prompts quite well um, to kind of get you off the ground and get the ball rolling with your personal statement, that's probably where I'd say, yes, it can be quite advantageous. But again, do bear in mind it is AI. It's kind of, um, it's not you <laughs> that's writing it. So again, it's not really a personal statement. So what my suggestion would be is, yes, use it to kind of generate ideas, um, but then ultimately it still needs to be kind of translated by you um, to be as um, as strong and as authentic and as uniquely you as it, as it can be. Um, but obviously if it is it is out there um, and and you and I know there is some advice on the UCAS website um, that that shows what UCAS's advice is, is is around it as well. So worth checking that out if you can. Um, we've also put together some, um, hopefully some really useful resources around personal statements, which I'm just going to play a short video um, about, uh, and it's all within our personal statement hub. So I'm going to hand over to Sharla, our, one of our students, to talk you through a little bit what's involved. Hi, my name is Sharla and I'm a third year medical physiology student here at University of Leicester. Back when I was writing my personal statement, I had the following questions. How to make my personal statement stand out from a crowd, how to make it perfect, and how to make your subject specific to the one that I'm applying for. If you have any of these questions, um, you should come check out our brand new personal statement hub. In our subject focused live sessions, we'll go through top tips on how to perfect your personal statement, how to make a standout crowd, and how to make it specific for the subjects that you're applying. From our, our hub, you can also join our group chats uh, to meet the new students, the future students, and to ask any questions from uh, peers. Hi. Great, and that's, uh, so that's our personal statement hub. Um, you can what we'll do is we'll pop the link in the chat for you so you have that before you finish this session today and um, and what what it consists of is essentially a range of different content both both general and academic uh, that um, you can use to then go through some of those um, ways of demonstrating your interest it might be that you complete one of our short academic taster courses or subject spotlights reading some blogs from students you can join there's a big group chat facility as well and um, where you can talk to other students in your position about how they're getting on with their personal statement within our community space uh, and a whole heap more. Um, so we, yeah, we definitely recommend uh, checking that out. Um, and that really is the end of, of the, the, the slides today. What we're going to do now um, is we'll go through um, some of the questions that have been um, asked. I can see in the, in the Q&A. So a big thank you for that. We'll um, ensure I try and get through as many as I can um, of these. So feel free to keep going. We'll, we'll go until about um, 4.45 um, if questions keep rolling in. Um, the first question is, um, coming in from, do I have to explain why I'm on a gap year? Uh, it's not relevant to my application. It's due to medical issues. Um, you don't have to explain it at all. Um, if you wish not to to talk about a gap year on the application, that is fine. Totally fine. Um, if, if if it is relevant to include on it, then go ahead and, and include. Uh, but if it's not relevant um, and or, or you don't wish to talk about it, that that's completely your prerogative to do so. Uh, so we'd recommend um, taking your own kind of personal route um, with that, not a problem at all. Uh, the next one is around how do I find out if I'm a home student? I was born and lived in England for half my life, but I'm um, writing my A-levels abroad. And the main um, way of doing that would probably be via um, student finance, who are pretty good at um, confirming if you are would be classed as a home student or an international student. So if you got in touch with um, Student Finance England, um, either via email or via their phone, um, I'm sure they'd be able to confirm that. Uh, for you as well. Um, next question is around when do people typically get offers and that will vary from subject to subject. Uh, we are pretty speedy as a university in, in um, turning around um, applications into offers if you are able to be uh, made an offer. Um, there isn't a kind of uh, specific timeline that we that we work to um, it, because it really depends on the individual application itself. Um, 
but it should it sh it should be done relatively quickly so you shouldn't be left hanging for for too long um where, once you've got your application in do bear in mind that what we see each year uh, is and we're seeing it even more so this year is that students are applying a little bit later um, so those that are applying slightly earlier in the cycle, there are there are fewer applications in the system that we are processing at that time. So the likelihood is the offer will be made slightly quicker than if you are applying slightly later in, let's say, um, kind of mid December or, or mid January, for example. Um, it kind of depends on when everyone else is applying at the same time. But it, for for us at Leicester, we 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 are pretty pretty speedy within the sector to to get those um, out to you. Um, what, so there's a question about what if I'm changing field? Um, I have a master's in international relations, but want to go back to university to train to be an operating department practitioner. Absolutely fine and, and fantastic to have a change of a change of career planned. Again, what, what we recommend there is with it using your personal statement to really talk us through the rationale as to what's made you think about that career decision, um, what strengths that you've gained from your master's that that might be able to apply again it, that the role and the degree you're applying for is very, very people focused, public focused, um, very organized, that sort of thing. So can you can you showcase any of those strengths? And I think we've got a, an operating department practice um, session as part of um, as part of the program, I think. Um, so if you join that, they'll be able to talk you through that as well. Potentially ask them them within their within their Q&A section. Um, the next question is, do I need a personal statement for 2025 applications and and that yes is the answer. Um, the the system isn't due to change uh, until at least 2026. And a UCAS are consulting on on potentially changing the personal statement to be um, question based rather than a a full kind of blank, a full statement. Um, but that's not going to be until at least 2026. Um, so we've been told. So for 2025, there are unlikely to be any changes um, in terms of either format or or the number of characters uh, involved in, in writing your personal statement as well. So we've rattled through those questions. Um, if there are any more, feel free to um, submit those uh, in the Q&A. What I'll just do is pop the link to our personal statement hub in the Q&A so you can see it as well. So if you'd like to um, utilize that over the next few weeks, and then please feel free to. It's open until February um, 2024. And just as a, a kind of recap, what's in there is it's a whole range of content that the university has produced um, to help you with your personal statement, both in terms of guidance and useful academic resources, in terms of subject spotlights and short um, taster courses, as well as blogs from students on how they wrote their personal statement and a group chat facility as well. So if you want to want to share your challenges and your thoughts with everybody, and then please feel free to join that. Uh, we've had another question. Thank you very much for your question. What do the University of Leicester look for in applications, i.e. things that make it stand out, especially for applying for medicine? Very good question. Um, and I think one of the main things that we look for um, within applications is that ability to um, kind of talk us through in, in a bit of detail those examples that I was referring to within the slides. So we see a lot of applications each year from students that, that tell us why they want to do a subject and maybe what they're good at. Um, and that's about it. Uh, whereas what we really like within personal statements is is still that we we still want to know what you're interested in doing, and what you're strong at. But it's those ex those students that are able to kind of articulate those examples in more depth. So if you're particularly um, focusing on your strengths in let's choose history, um, it's the ability to say I, I'm, I'm applying for history because I like these particular bits of history specifically i'm really fascinated by let's say american history um I've, I've, i'm particularly interested in this particular area or era of american history and i've done some extra reading or listening or watching if you've if you've either done uh podcasts or ted talks whatever it might be um and within being a kind of histor a history student yet yeah, I'm, I'm expected to be able to show again critical thinking ability to craft um, essays or discussions or arguments and I've demonstrated that, that here um, it's those type of examples that are able to link a few things together that for, for us at Leicester make you really stand out at Leicester we uh, we like to call ourselves citizens of change so what we're looking for is people that have a real sense of um, kind of that community belonging that sense of giving something back and that sense of um, really striving to change um, society and change the world as uh, so if you're able to demonstrate that in a personal statement again that's a really nice thing more relevant for certain subjects i should say uh, within that 
but essentially in terms of that standing out piece it's it's about looking through your personal statement and going is that as stronger representation of me as it can be um and if not can i can i tweak things a little bit um to, to make it so so hopefully that's given a little bit of advice i think for, for things like medicine um it's that ability to showcase what you learned in any experience we have particular focus on empathy at leicester um so if you're able to really showcase your um your levels of empathy uh, then then absolutely do that we do also have a medicine specific talk uh, at 6 p.m today um where uh, colleagues in the medical school will talk you through that in more detail what they're expecting to see and again the, the type of the type of medicine curriculum that we have and again how that maybe then transposes to what a good personal statement looks like um but particularly particularly empathy with with medicine i'd say it doesn't look like we've got any more uh, questions in the q a so what we'll do is we'll call it a early evening there and um, so what uh, just to round off a big big thank you uh, for joining us this evening i hope that's been useful for your advice uh, and guidance in terms of shaping your personal statement good luck with the process uh, if you're applying to the university of leicester uh, we really look forward to seeing you at one of our offer holder days in the spring get involved in the university and um, personal statement hub and the group chat in there um, have a lovely evening and we'll see you all very soon <laughs>